thank the Defence uh, Innovators and Industry Association for inviting me to this uh, important topic. And uh, I know that uh, there's a lot of uh, consensus uh, on the design, uh, the need to design and develop, build and to expand the defence industrial base of the nation. Statistics and uh, annual CIPRI reports highlight the reality of how India is a big defence importer. It has been the quest of successive governments with varying degrees of success to reduce the import bill and to indigenize defense equipment needs. Despite various measures, the indigenous content in our capital expenditure has, however, remained around 30 to 35 percent. India, with her long and arduous borders and a very large coastline, constantly increasing threat perceptions and immense security needs needs us to devote a significant amount to the defence spend, which has been therefore ballooning every year. Against this uh, enhancing spend every year, it is apparent that the lion's share is going to imports and this is precisely where the challenge lies. Policy making is the prerogative of government and successive governments have been working on enabling policies to encourage indigenous manufacturing and for far greater involvement of the private sector. However, to foster a vibrant defense manufacturing environment, we have to factor the essentiality of a healthy and integral R&D component. It is towards this end that I appreciate that the organizers of this conference for putting a focus on design and development. Defense-related technologies and related manufacturing are however altogether another cup of tea where there has to be a sustained commitment to ongoing research and development in a responsive time frame. It is apparent that as a nation, we spend a significantly low amount, less than 1% on R&D. This trait, unfortunately, holds good for the defense industry too, and as a special focus has to be given if we are to make headway in our self-reliance efforts. The gathering here is uh, aware that the defense sales are the hardest thing to do and it is an endurance, endurance race to be a contender. We are all for our armed forces to be equipped with reliable equipment with inbuilt technology that would give them the necessary edge on the battlefield. However, the quest to be state of the art, the subsequent definition of QRs, RFPs and the following tendering and procurement procedures have more than uh, more often not resulted in endless waiting for the armed forces. Coupled with this is the ongoing debate of indigenous technologies versus dependence on technology transfers. Although we have been fairly successful in absorbing technology transfers, which have certainly helped uh, constrain costs and uh, contain costs and achieve the short term, indigenous design definitely has the added advantage or uh, that the intellectual property belongs to the nation and therefore is the core value of any technology company. DBP 2016, through its by Indian IDDM category, has certainly created grounds for supporting indigenous design and I'm certain that the industry would respond to it. I've uh, listed some of the observations, legacy impediments with the nation's defense establishment. I'm sorry. It's very fine print, I'm sure some of you can see it. Uh, I thought I'll start with that and then come to the next uh, stage. Vast resources of talented and committed yet underutilized man uh, manpower in our R&D and defense PSUs. Manpower efforts are dissipated on following procedures rather than focusing on timely achievement of goals and deadlines. Procurement procedures were too stringent and inflexible. Absence of a mechanism to regularly document and share capabilities of the private sector and the DPSUs resulting in gaps in awareness of domestic capabilities across the spectrum and at all levels of government, industry and the armed forces. Far higher scrutiny on defence procurement procedures has resulted in an overcautious attitude uh, at each level that takes the focus away from the larger picture. 
despite a, a large engagement of SMEs with DRDO and the DPSUs and the ordnance factories, there is no defined mechanism to encourage or keep a sustaining and enduring relationship. Inadequate involvement with the private sector for prototyping and model building of tested technologies. Inadequate encouragement of the private sector capacity building for integration capabilities of weapon systems and platforms. The Indian Navy's <coughs> proactive involvement in not only funding, but its complete involvement in the design and development has led to timely delivery of weapon systems and platforms. The complexity of warship building has largely been indigenized due to the active involvement of the service, which is what is desired from the Army and the Air Force as well. Given the uncertainty and the long gestation period of sales to materialize and the constantly changing needs due to the dynamic nature of technologies, it is therefore important for Indian manufacturers to be able to have the resources to sustain the R&D related expenditure on, a, on an ongoing basis to design the products as per the anticipated needs of the armed forces. So I have come up with a few suggestions to support the efforts in that direction. Did I go the wrong way? You have to go back. Just uh, get. Uh, this is, is that the first thing? The second one. Yeah. While there is a great deal of focus and rigid, uh, rightly so in MOD on the utilization of the budget, which is a, a annual imperative, <laughs> an equal amount or more effort has to go into constantly updating and tracking the progress made on the long-term perspective plan of the armed forces and also the LTIPP. It is equally important to shape the larger picture with the active involvement of the stakeholders on an ongoing basis. Policies related to encouraging indigenous design and manufacturing have to be updated, framed in a, in a much more supportive and proactive manner. Substantial funding to be provisioned in the budget for support funding these companies, clusters as qualified by DRDO or the MOD. DRDO and MOD and the armed forces to proactively formulate dynamic evaluation panels of experts to qualify the relevant technologies for indigenous support. Industry to be sensitized constantly on the matter of timely deliveries for the armed forces. The DRDO, MOD to build in far greater flexibility and the matter of trust in policies and procedures related to choice of industry partners. I think this is a very valid point. It's not us versus them, not government versus the private sector, but it has to be inclusive. Armed forces to reach out to industry constantly to educate them of their operating environment and conditions to enable industry to understand and to respond. Uh, respond with appropriate designs and development. Non-existence of link with academia is definitely a shortfall. I think we have to bring in far greater involvement to in the design and development efforts. I think our uh, universities, our education, uh, higher educational institutions are vastly underutilized and this is where there's potential to bring strong linkages. The Indian industry has the advantage of being more familiar with home conditions and the requirements of the armed forces. The domestic market situation also familiarizes prospective vendors to be realistic in their assessments to deliver. The reaching out to each other has to happen in a much more open and transparent manner if we are to succeed in ushering a sustainable culture of design and development towards broad basing the defense manufacturing industry in India. Thank you. I am referred uh, to this uh, event yesterday where uh, I spoke to some of your colleagues uh, who are leaders and who are uh, uh, members of parliament and uh, there were about uh, a dozen of them and of course uh, across the parties and one of the concerns which I also asked the Raksha Mantri about this, uh, is there a tendency among some of our people's representatives uh, to try and protect uh, the defense public sector units because they have their constituencies to look at. Should we sort of uh, go above that and you know look at a larger natural uh, national consensus so that you know we have a right balance of private sector involvement 
and nobody is going to uh, be able to kill the defense public sector unit. But this uh, you know, general mood that I saw in that meeting, the interaction, was slightly uh, jarring uh, to me because if we are looking at opening up the sector, then I think we need to also look at uh, the members of parliament are also uh, changing their mindset. What is your view? I've, uh, you know, when I was in the Ministry of Defense, I've had the opportunity to go and talk to some of these trade unions right. that are with the ordnance factories and the defense PSUs. Mm -hmm. And you know that uh, trade unions are quite strong and naturally uh, very active. But uh, that does not mean that they are not flexible to accommodate the larger needs of the country. And that's where it calls for more effective leadership, clarity in the direction. Right. And I'm sure if that is given, they will cooperate very well. Exactly. And I think that is where the challenge is. Exactly. Instead of saying that that's an impediment. No, yeah, that challenge needs to be overcome or at least to be met. Yeah. Uh, what would you suggest <coughs> in terms of, uh, again, creating awareness? Uh, you know, you, since you handled the ministry and uh, you were also in charge of, I think, if I'm not mistaken, of the Raksha Upadan, uh, yeah. that is the defense yeah. production at one point in time. Uh, how would we make those units efficient and how would we co-opt uh, SMEs and MSMEs in, in their ecosystem? I think I have outlined some of those yes, points. Yeah, I think, uh, can, uh, yes, again, uh, I feel uh, the it, there has to be a constant dialogue. Right. The larger picture has to be kept in mind. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, depending on the capabilities of the ordnance factory or the DPSU, right. you have to engage more frequently with the SME, MSMEs. Yeah. You know, and there is a large base of them in, involved with the DRDO and the uh, defense manufacturing. Mm -hmm. That engagement is essential. The urgency to evolve, the urgency to design, the urgency to deliver what the armed forces want has to be felt before we can make any progress. Yeah, and I think uh, we should also sort of uh, go above uh, political affiliations, uh, I suppose, uh, in uh, in the respect of defense policies or defense production policies, because that's where it's, it has to be a continuum. It can't be just you know one government to the other. Uh, would you think that uh, we are, I mean, our politicians and our uh, members of parliament and members of the legislative assembly are capable of doing that because you've uh, dealt with them and you were yourself a member of parliament uh, more than twice? I Going by my former boss, Mr. Anthony, yes. I think he looked at the picture as a matter of national importance. Right. I don't think he ever politicized it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, rightly so, even during his time, mm -hmm. I think the opposition also never made any That's right. issue of it. I think it only gets politicized when there's some. Monkey deals going on.